this is a very interesting one. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm quite jealous that Natasha will be moderating this. It is a panel discussion on using social media to promote social good. And let me introduce the panelists, uh, beginning with John Ercilia, of course, actor and environmentalist, best known for playing the role of protagonist Antonio Luna in the historic epic film, General Luna. We also have oh, na. <laughs> Laura Lehman. She is Miss World Philippines 2017. She also placed first runner-up uh, in the Binibining Pilipinas pageant last 2014 and was Ateneo de Manila University's UAAP courtside reporter. And finally, we have Miguel Bermundo, the program manager for education and citizenship of Globe Telecom. He is also, oh well, my fans, he is also the co-founder of Dream Big Pilipinas FA, a non-profit organization that uses football as a tool for community development in underserved communities. Okay, so on that note, uh, let us in, uh, invite all of our panelists to join us on stage, and uh, we'll have Natasha take it away. Thank, Thank you, you, Natasha. Adam. Come on up, join me. Uh, you know, we have this panel every year since we started in 2000. Um, it, this has been six years. It's been six years. So it's, it's always one of the panels I look forward to, so I'm looking forward to moderate this. But in 2012, it was interesting because at that time, we were only seeing the start or the potential of social media. And now, five years later, it's affecting every aspect of our lives, right? So uh, I think it's great to have this panel at this time. Um, let me join you guys. I've been a multimedia uh, reporter for Rappler for six years, and when we first started, uh, there was not this sort of environment that we're experiencing now. And a lot of people say it's very toxic right now. So um, why don't we start the panel by, what do you, how do you feel when you go online? Do you feel that there's more negativity or more positivity? John, we'll start with you. Oh, man. Reporter, after, sorry. After a long speech. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I don't even want to open my Facebook, you know, sometimes because there's a lot of negativity. But you know what? That is a very good opportunity for you and for us to, to uh, post something that can actually uh, get the attention of a lot of people, Baka we're already in this cycle. I mean, sometimes may ganun time, ang, 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 the group of people, no? pag, parang there's this kind of energy na pag nandun na kayong lahat, nan, ay, nakain na kayo ng buong energy na parang walang, parang, wala kasing, uy, sandali, <laughs> gising. It's like a mob. Yes, yes, something like that. So we really, especially if um, the people are, are starting not to think, masyado nang emotional, so, parang kailangan merong, merong gigising, merong magsasabi naman ng something positive, or merong, uh, yes, yes, something like that, yeah. A voice of reason. Okay, Miguel? I think we see uh, both in equal weights. Uh, you have negativity and positivity. I guess it's very confronting for many of us uh, to see all the negativity. Uh, and I think these are all coffee shop talks that we all were surrounded with online. It's just that now we have a, a social media gives us a megaphone to see not just ours, our friends, but everyone else's all across the world. So I think it's really, uh, while it is confronting, there are opportunities for us to do something about it. And being well informed gives us that opportunity uh, to take action. Laura. Well, for me, I think that, of course, we see negativity and we also see positivity. But I think a lot of what you see also has to do with yourself because you choose what you see. Sometimes who you are is who you surround yourself with and I think that's the case also with social media. Because personally, when I see somebody attacking someone on social media or when I see negativity in social media, I unfollow, I block. Because I think social media has become sort of like a dialogue when you're talking to people every day and someone is negative towards you and someone is speaking bad about you, you'll also feel negative, you'll also see down. And it's the same thing when you read something. If you read something negative, if you read something that um, says very mean things, you also get affected. So it's better to just block those things out and just choose to read the positive and choose to stay happy. But is that, does that also, you know, blocking is, is an easy way to, to block off the negativity. But does that also, that also 
risks putting you in a, in a bubble where you only you know, see or hear the opinions of people who are similar to you, which also has a downside. So what do you guys think about blocking? Are, are blocking trolls or people who are dissenting your opinions, is that the right way? Or how do you guys personally decide who to block? There's no you know, right or wrong answer, but it would be interesting to kind of see how people who are uh, in, in the public sphere versus people who are less public, how do you guys decide? Actually, yun yung problema ko kasi like uh, when you endorse something or, or when they see you on TV, they don't expect you to 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 get aside, no? At at kumuha ng isang grupo para kampihan something. So it's not really easy for me to block anyone. So parang or to unfriend anyone. So ang nangyayari sa akin, uh, I listen to both to all sides, in fact, and I try to create. Uh, some some uh, shout outs or posts na tingin ko parehong mabibigyan uh, encouragement yung all sides something like that and hini but slowly sometimes merong mga nag friend na mali you know, one parang once in the blue moon merong nag friend sabi ko siguro ayo niya yung yung aking post so there's the time naman na yung mga nasa list na waiting list ina ina approve ko naman yeah, I think John uh, said it beautifully uh, earlier in his speech that we're all connected. And I think that opportunity to be completely connected to the world is, is something unheard of in, uh, in decades ago. Yeah. Um, and I think the opportunity here is, is to practice empathy. Whether we see something negative or positive, it's, uh, well, if we're looking at just a negative, um, how, however confronting it is, you you practice seeing the pain of the person. No one is authentically evil or wrong. You, you, you just want to see, uh, if there's a way to see goodness in context, uh, then you can create the right action rather than um, um, confront fire with fire. Yes. That's, so I, I, I'm not in the practice of blocking, yeah. but I can understand how people uh, would also. For me, I think there's a difference between negative criticism and constructive criticism. Because there's a difference when someone is trolling or saying very bad things out of emotion, and then there's a difference when someone is saying things out of constructive criticism to make you better so that you yourself improve. So I think you also have to be careful with that. There's a fine line because you do have to listen to those who have opinions that are not similar to yours. But that's very different from someone who is just bashing out of emotion, out of anger. Okay, Miguel, I have a follow-up to your question. But very quickly, guys, because this is a social media panel, I have my phone with me on stage, so you guys could tweet questions. I know it's very interesting. I'm at Natasha G on Twitter, so feel free to send over your questions and we can talk about them. Miguel, just to follow up, you said, you know, these people aren't inherently evil, right? I mean, they're, they're people with emotions who are emotional. But nowadays, that's not necessarily the case because there is evidence that it's, there is other uh, trolls, fake accounts, uh, a propaganda machine that is funded by various groups. There are bots that are not people, but a machinery. So then how do you deal with this? This is completely unprecedented. And some of these propaganda machines or movements online on both sides, whatever sides, I'm not talking about anything specific, but these people, some of these people are hired to push a specific agenda, not necessarily to hurt you personally, but you know that isn't part of, of what they're there for. So how do you handle that? I think uh, that would be a, a big lesson on digital discernment. And when we say digital discernment, it's not really to seek out who is in the truth, because no one really has the mon a monopoly of the truth. Uh, but when you say discernment, it's really to, uh, to identify and isolate what is opinion, what is someone's opinion, and what is the truth. So if we're able to uh, uh, ride through and, um, and cut through the clutter, and I think that's when we can make proper decisions uh, whenever we see something online. I'm interested to know, how do you, how do you guys personally use social media? Uh, you know, uh, for, for movies, for instance, for actors, hype on social media is everything, right? It, it could help uh, a movie uh, succeed. There's been some controversy of directors who don't necessarily react very well to criticism. Um, John, how do you use social media? Well, actually, wala naman kasi, oh, well, uh, may, meron lang ako isang naging uh, parang maling uh, parang uh, issue before. 
na maraming pumasok talaga ng mga bashers. Pero it wasn't proven kasi merong, merong isang, isang group ng, uh, uh, how do we call it, uh, nagmamanage ng, uh, ng isang page na pinagtanggol ako dun sa mga nagbabash kasi it's not really mine. No? Pero akala nila ako. Uh, actually, Uh, pag halimbawang puro negative na yung nakikita ko sa, sa mga postings, uh, itinatry kong uh, kausapin, makipagkaroon ng conversation. And then, sinasabi ko, if, if that is fake news, you have to, to uh, research. Kasi importante eh. And then, nakikita ko naman yung ibang mga, especially yung mga friends ka naman talaga na medyo parang nagpo-post ng mga fake news. Somehow makikita mo dun sa kanilang mga postings, meron na silang din delete Kasi importante rin yun na ma-realize nila. Even my, my nephews and nieces, sometimes nadadala sila ng mga fake news. So, so, pero at least ngayon, aware na yung mga, ano, mga tao na may fake news na kailangan bago ka mag-post. Uh, I-research mo muna. I mean, balikan mo yung source niya. Baka naman mali yan. So I think importante rin na binibigyan natin sila ng ganong information at saka yung trying to, ay ayaw ko kasing magmukhang parang we're better than them, no? Or, or somehow to educate our, our uh, parang uh, FB friends na may other ways, bi, uh, ibang paraan para mag, magsabi tayo ng mga gusto nating uh, shoutouts. I mean, we have to, to research first. We have to go back to its resources. Uh, Pag-usap, uh, mag-aral tayo. I mean, kailangan natin mag-isip at mag-analyze. I think that's a great point because especially in this country that's obsessed with beauty and celebrity, you guys have, you know, you are in a position of power to educate. Lao, this country loves beauty pageants. Uh, they're so supportive when you're going. Tapos pag matalo, parang grabe magbash, di ba? I mean, we've seen this happen. Uh, check. Hi guys, that's me, follow. Um, <laughs> go na lang to the notification because I'm already getting some great questions. So if you guys could go to the mentions. Um, how, do you, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with um, bashers? You, you said you were blocking, but um, you know, the support is great. But unfortunately, for public figures, you guys can't just get off Twitter when you're about to go and then when you lose by, you know, disappear. So um, John had given examples of how he engages. With, with trolls um, or people who disagree with him. Lau, how do you do that? Well, you know, for me, if you open my Instagram or my Twitter page, it says Laura Liman. But right under that, it says Miss World Philippines. And because I Miss World Philippines and because I have the sash that says Philippines and I don't have a sash that says Laura, I'm always very conscious of how I carry myself and what I do because at the end of the day, I'm representing the Philippines. I'm representing the Philippines and of course, I want to represent all of you in the best way po possible because I'm so proud to be Filipina and I want the world to see how, how great of a country we are, that we're not the scary country that people see on the news, you know? We're, we're happy people. And on my social media, I want to promote that because I know the other countries are looking. I know Miss World Indonesia or Miss World America is looking. And I want to make sure that they see our country in a positive light. And that's really what I aim to do in social media. Okay. Moving from... Go ahead. Yeah, can I add something? Yes, please. May not discover kasi ako before, no? Um, merong mga nang babash. Ginagawa ko, pinupuntahan ko directly dun sa messenger. Kinakausap ko oh, sila. Wow. Yes. Kasi you know what? Doon sila mas nagiging tao. Kasi yung kasing, may, there's this culture yeah. of, of um, FB. FB shoutouts. Na feel lang nila eh. Kasi it's a fad. Parang ganun. And suddenly, they're not actually even aware of what they're saying. Yeah. So pag kinausap mo sila doon, suddenly makikita mo, yung tao sa tao ang nag-uusap. Sabi ko, wait, sandali lang. Uh, bakit tayo nagsisigawan? But tayo nag, nag, nagmumurahan doon sa, sa ano. Kasi yun yung parang, aw, oh, sikat siya at nagsalita siya ng ganito, nag, nag, nag bash siya. So parang merong ganun ng culture. So yun, uh, ginawa ko yan. And then suddenly, yun namang mga medyo nagbabash, bumaba yung kanilang ano, nagkakaintindihan kami. Tapos tumitigil sila. That's, gr that's yes. great. I, yes. I actually didn't know that was the thing that celebrities did. Because um, the, the other thing going off of that, sometimes when you comment and your comment gets likes, it's addicting. Right? Uh, there's been so many studies that social media, when you use it, it releases the same hormones that's released during sex or during gambling. Social media is addicting and it, it feels good. So that's a great point because 
when you actually engage them person to person, yes. there's nobody else watching. Yes. Nobody yes. cares about yes. the likes, yes. and you can actually converse. Yes, that's right. That's great. Okay, uh, Miguel. You may not be a public figure, but you are part of the biggest telecommunications company in the country. Uh, what is Globe doing, for instance, to to contribute and make it, to contribute to making uh, social media online less toxic? Yeah, uh, pr particularly I handle the public education partnerships. Uh, in which case, we have a long-term partnership with the Department of Education uh, in educating the youth, uh, specifically public school, uh, who lack the infrastructure uh, and um, curriculum uh, for digital education. So what we do is we have, um, we have a campaign called uh, Digital Thumbprint Program. Um, and that program is about um, creating workshops, carrying out workshops for kids uh, in K to 12 and all the way to college level um, in responsible digital citizenship. So that means um, how, do you, how do you protect yourself from, from cyber crimes and security risks? How do you behave online, uh, proper etiquette and responsibility? And how can you actually use technology to better yourself? Uh, I, I, that's great. I think digital literacy is definitely something that needs to be incorporated in perhaps curriculums one day, especially because it's such a changing world. And if, if children are growing up with social media, they need to learn how to use it properly. Thank you for that initiative. Okay, guys, my Twitter is bursting. Um, the last time I got this much is because people were bashing me. So ngayon puro questions. So I'm happy. Okay, this is, there's an interesting one from at Trucks Gaza. Do you think, I guess this is for Lau and John, do you think public figures should be neutral and try to mediate social media opinions or take a stand and influence? Well, you, also, you have to take a stand and influence. Pero you have to know where the other side is coming from. I think that's a very intelligent way of understanding the person that you don't understand. Because no? in the very first place, Possibleng kulang lang sila ng information kaya sila ganon. Or there are some fanatics that you have to uh, parang understand na yun yung way of thinking nila. So hindi mo na sila pwedeng labanan pa. Um, but I think slowly. I mean, you have to compose some some. Um, uh, phrases that will make them uh, feel better rather than ano ka, uh, parang, uh, uh, reprimanding or, or uh, uh, nang-aaway, something like that. No? So, kailangan mo rin pumili ng salita. Kagaya nung ginawa ko, sabi ko, nagpunta ako sa messenger and I, I talk to them as, as a person. Sandali lang. Hindi, hindi very, ano, hindi, hindi ka nang -re reprimand ng tao. So, may stand ka, pero kailangan mong pumili ng mga salita. More conscious than yes. other private citizens. Okay. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. I think it's important to take a stand because you do have a voice and you have a lot of people following you. But at the same time, I think that it's important not to be partisan. Because at the end of the day, I know I'm not a politician. I don't have that knowledge yes. of political background or even how the econ economy works. I'm from a completely different side. So my goal is really to, to make people happy, to, to spread goodwill. and as long as the messages I, s I spread are value-based and not partisan, not, not uh, siding with yes. someone else, I think that's the more important part of it. Great. Ako, I believe okay. that too. I'm, I'm non-partisan. Uh, it, it's a choice. Uh, kailangan kong intin, um, i intindihin ang pinanggagalingan ng lahat. Yeah, I think that's one of the problems also is that social media has become so divisive. It's either you're with us or against us. Kaya mahirap up to engage in conversation, right? Uh, Miguel, one of the biggest telcos means in this country means uh, a lot of power as well. And um, could we use scroll up, please? I saw a, a great question since you mentioned empathy earlier. Sorry, scroll down. You mentioned empathy, Miguel, and there's a, nope, next one. Here, I have it here. At Edge Angeles asks, people have the fight or flight reaction when faced with logic. Please ask how empathy can be practiced with stubborn people. Because, you know, it was so, she was so positive. Miguel was like, let's be empathetic. How do you do that when they're so stubborn? It's not easy. 
<laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, especially if they harp on things that are so se that you are so sensitive in. I, everyone has their own sensitive um, uh, issues. Um, uh, some it's about family, some it's about their work, their level of success. Um, and if, you're, if we're able to take a step back and understand that everyone else is going through something similar, then we can understand where the, the pain is coming from. If we, just, if we just isolate those who are really just, uh, um, who are paid, the, the, the black propaganda, yeah. if we can take it all aside the bots mm -hmm. and just look at those who are, who are in pain, who want to voice out, who have really valid concerns, mm -hmm. but um, if, if we feel they are in, um, um, in conflict with our uh, with our own views, then that is one opinion and one another. And I think it's something we have to respect. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of it being any easier, I don't think it can it can get easier. But but I think we should all be responsible in giving people a chance to and and see their views also. You know, people always ask me, why do you even engage with trolls in the first place? They're so stubborn, they're not going to listen exactly what Sean said. And, you know, I think one of, the, one of the valuable things to say to that is that even if you're not convincing that particular account, there are other people watching. And it's good for them, for the silent people watching, to hear yeah. different perspectives. Yeah. And perhaps you may not convince that pers particular person, but you might give courage to somebody else to speak out or to change someone else who's watching. Right, so I think that's also important. Yeah, I think just to add also, when whenever we share something, uh, I don't know if you experience. Um, I, I'm assuming most people experience being bashed or uh, having a thread going on about your claim, and it's it's in conflict with what you you uh, you are going for. And instead of deleting, uh, there there are many many occurrences where other people would defend you as much as the people who are who are taking the offense. And I think that's uh, uh, an encouraging uh, thing also about social media, is that it's, it's really just a tool, uh, you know, and it just gives more people uh, a chance to defend and also to put clarity on what they believe in. I'm looking at these questions and they're all kind of the similar thread. At J Beltran was asking, how do you get your message across to a seemingly purposely deaf mob? So ang raming hugot ng mga tao. And it's all around the same thread, no? Um, okay, here's an interesting question. And a lot of these were ones I meant to ask, so I'm glad these are coming through. Um, we have a question on fake news. John, you mentioned fake news, the prevalence of fake news. It's affecting our democracy. It's affecting people's opinions. Um, how do you suggest people, like you said, some of your nephews are a victim to that. What tips do you suggest for people to, to um, be smarter about the posts that they, that they share? May nag circulate na list ng mga fake, uh, ng mga, resor mga sources ng fake news. Uh, I, I, I think, um, sinier ko rin siya sa, sa, ano ko, sa postings ko. I think that's important. Para malaman nila kung yung pinanggagalingan ng kanilang sources eh, doon sa group ng list na yan. So I did that. How about you, Madam? Um, in terms of fake news, uh, it, it's quite hard to, to discern for, for many if, if you're not informed on how to validate uh, sources, what, how, to, how to really check what is credible and what isn't. In fact, I think um, many experience, uh, for those who use free Facebook, you can only see the headline, and you have to, you know, you'll be deducted from data charges if you if you open and click to verify. So many people uh, can I can understand how easily uh, people could believe the headline without really verifying the the source. So I think it's all around us, and if if we can be more aware of how to validate, I think that would be very powerful for us. Personally. I like how we're talking about fake news, and I like how fake news is trending these days, simply because it gives people more awareness. So they're aware that there is fake news out there, that people are spreading false information, and I think as long as we know that, and as long as we are aware of that, then that already helps prevent the process, because it makes people more picky about what they're reading, what they're sharing. Filipinos actually are among the top social media users in the world, okay? Four hours on average a day. Who here spends four hours a day on social media? When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you check? Facebook. When you go to bed at night, what's the last thing you check? So again, I will ask, 
parang hindi four hours. Four hours. <laughs> mga eight hours na yun. <laughs> mga eight hours na. Diba? I mean, you pick up your phone every time you're bored, you're waiting, you have lunch break, that's one hour, you know? And you're always automatically checking Instagram or Facebook, right? Is it necessary? I have a question here from at sex Jan. Do you think hiatus from social media is necessary to detoxify oneself from its negativity? Do you think hiatus from social media is necessary to de detoxify yourself from its negativity? It's not here. Uh, I th yeah, there you go. Do you think hiatus from social media? What do you think? I think it's necessary just because I think it's important to take time away from the computer and what other people are saying and just to take time to breathe and be in the real world and remember that things are happening outside of our phone. But I don't think it means that you have to delete your social media. I think it just means you have to be aware of the fact that there's a world outside going on and not everything is on the computer. Yeah, I agree. I think um, more than the clutter we see on what's fake news, what isn't, it would be nice to breathe air, go outside, um, connect with people on a personal level. I think that would be the more important um, aspect that we lack uh, or we often neglect now um, because of social media. Yeah, or, or um, take it like as, as um, like uh, when you're working, you have a um, eight to five um, <laughs> work job. And then you can say that this Sunday, I will not open my Facebook. Oh. That would be so Something great. Something like that. <laughs> uh, yes. Or this week, uh, this uh, day, uh, until 10 o'clock lang yung aking Facebook. Something <laughs> like that. May bakasyon ka. <laughs> May bakasyon ka. I mean, or tatlong araw kang hindi titingin. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I, I wish we could do that as journalists, <laughs> pero masasko pa na kami. Ah, if, right. if that is your job, but it's yeah, not, it's right? not I mean, easy. Yeah, yes, for everybody else, I think it's really healthy yeah, to be able yeah. to limit yourself. There are apps actually that, that alarm when you go over a certain time so you can limit that usage. Might not be that great for a telco company though, I don't know. <laughs> okay, um, we have uh, more questions. It's, it's, it's flooding in, it's coming in. So please just feel free to jump in if you want to answer any of those questions. But here's an interesting one from at Togski, Troy Tolentino. Was there a time um, wherein something significant happened to social media? Perhaps maybe it was, it was bashing, or for me, I remember it was someone who told me a perspective I never really quite thought of before, and that person actually convinced me otherwise of, of an opinion. So I remember those because, you know, it's, it's, it's important to listen also. But can you guys think of any particular moment um, on social media that, Lao, I mean, was it all the support from social media that made you also, you know, go for, for this world? How has it affected you? You know, I think what's the most important is that you have to know yourself. You have to believe in yourself and you have to be confident in yourself. Because when you know yourself, then it's not going to matter what people say. You know, someone can bash you, someone can say this and that about you, but when you know yourself, when you know your morals and know your stance on things, then it's not going to affect you. So I think that's how you should, you should look at life and that's how you should go about your life. So optimistic. <laughs> I love it. Okay. John's smiling. <laughs> I'm really very weak on that part. I uh, I mean, there was this really big incident uh, yeah, that, that happened. Hindi naman talaga. Alam mo yung, there's this my face on on a post and then mayroong ca caption na parang ako yung uh, di ko alam kung kung nakita ng ibang nandito yon but anyway so uh, the people took it as mine and then talagang i mean you know what the, the, the <laughs> who i mean you know what yung mga yung mga sentences yung mga mga terms na you cannot actually chew i mean so parang suddenly parang wow <laughs> i mean you know what he, yes i mean Ganon kami ng tao na hindi pa nila na evaluate kung ako talaga yon o kung akin talaga yun. And there's this friend of mine na yung lahat ng mga mga taong yun actually is actually na sa page niya and kakampi nila. And then sinabi niya, you know what? I can actually put um, a passage on your picture like this. So ginagumawa siya ng sample. See? So and the, but the yes, effect they was stopped. massive. Yeah. Yes, they stopped. You know, mahirap minsan talaga pag hindi nila, uh, hindi nila I mean, uh, pinag-aaralan mabuti. Like, pero sa akin, hirap ako. 
it's really hard for me. It's, I think it's important also to be honest, right? Because yeah. people have different tolerances to these things, and that's why people's behavior in social media is also different. And there's no right or wrong answer. There's no actual, you know, I mean, if, if there was an answer, then we, would, we wouldn't be in this situation, right? Yeah, if people could yeah. Yeah, control themselves and what they post. Yeah, that's true. Before, kasi yung sinabi kong sumagot ako sa messenger, isa, dalawa lang yun. Mm. Pero pag nagbaba siya, yung thousands na. Yeah. na. Yeah. Thousands, as in, wow. And they have the same words and phrases. Na parang sa nanggaling yun. Ang sarap sa nang isipin na these people are actually just uh, posers or paid. Pero yung iba hindi eh. Talagang parang nakain na sila ng sistema, as, as they say it. Like Twitter system. Miguel, it, you know, you, you speak to a lot of people, a lot of uh, the people you try to educate on social media. Do you, do you have a specific experience that you really? Maybe someone that shared, yeah, maybe they shared something with you that really stuck with them, or perhaps a personal experience? Well, um, a couple of years back, I wrote something that was published uh, in Rappler. Um, and it was, I, it was my opinions about uh, sports in the Philippines. And that, uh, it affected me that yeah. the number of, uh, the mood meter in, in Rappler just <laughs> changes every day. So I'd, I would look at it. And it made me reflect on the kind of um, values I held on. Um, I th for me, what uh, what I assessed on that is the more, if if when I seek a lot of validation, um, that that is depend that where my success is dependent on, uh, then that's when it can really affect me. And what I really wanted to do from the beginning is to just share my opinion, uh, whether it is something that collectively people will uh, accept or not. And when you know when I think when the practice of taking a step back and understanding why you're upset, why why they are upset, um, that. There's peace in that also. Yeah. yeah, I can imagine sports. Filipinos, you know, when people ask me, what's the Philippines like? I say three things. I say, the Philippines stops for three things. Beauty pageants, Manny Pacquiao boxing fight, so I understand this basketball, and typhoons. And that's it. I mean, that really describes us, right? So I can imagine the sort of opinions you got. I, you know, I, like I've focused on the negativity through this whole time. But there are also positive things out of social media. What are, as public figures and as private citizens, what are the positive ways that we can use social media? And if you could have a plea to the Filipino people on how to use it, what would it be? This would be um, our final question. There's so many. I encourage all of you to tag um, our panelists and continue this conversation online. No one has hashtag 2030 now, guys. I didn't answer your question without a hashtag. <laughs> but um, please, when you go down the panel, say what your Twitter account is um, if, if you want to continue this conversation with them. And that question on how should Filipinos use this, what are your tips on keeping it positive, taking off the toxicity of, of, of online in the Philippines? Whoever wants to go. Well, actually, I said in my speech, I, I don't believe in colors. Uh, hindi ka pwede maging apolitical, pero ako, para sa akin, uh, I'm pro-Filipino. So, kung saan tayo dalhin ng bansa natin, I can always sympathize, I can always respect, uh, but of course, yung sarili kong disposition, hindi kailangang uh, uh, magbago. And, uh, mas magiging positive yung aking mga postings pag pareho ko silang naiintindihan. Because I have friends sa lahat ng sides eh. So nakikita ko yung, yung, yung uh, pinanggagalingan nila. So, pag nagpo-post ako, sinasabi ko sa kanila na I am not this and I am not that. I am pro-Filipino. Kung ano ang para sa mas nakararami doon tayo. Regardless of yes, political regard party. Yes, that's really true. And sinasabi ko sa kanila, like, uh, well, kagaya ngayon, halimbawa, 100 million ang ating, ano, ang ating uh, population. 50 million ang ating uh, population ng registered voters. 16 million ang bumoto. So, makikita mo kagad yung disparity kung, kung alin ba talaga ang majority at alin ang medyo ang maingay lang. So, you have to realize that. So, alam mo ngayon kung paano mo i-handle ang mga postings mo at alam mo kung paano mo uh, i-deal yung, yung each side. Kasi malinaw sa'yo na alin ba talaga ang maingay lang at alin ba talaga ang 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 uh, yung actual I think that's really important to note especially as we're wrapping up that social media is not reality. 
Um, and this is also important for, for millennials who, you know, uh, whose values sometimes may change also on what, what they present online because of the validation. But social media and the likes or the comments, that does not represent reality. Yes, it's true. My points on social media and the closing points. Okay, well basically for me, I think there's a lack of happiness and gratefulness in the world. People are just so negative. And I think it's the same in everyday life. When you live your life with a smile, when you surround yourself with people who are happy and sharing positive vibes, then you can do the same on social media. Because if it's easy for you to share a post about the troll or to share a post about the basher, then why can't you share a post about the little boy outside McDonald's using the light to study? You know, it, 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 you become what you surround yourself with. So that's really my stance on everything. Use social media for social good. That's a great point. Balance the posts, right? Wag lagi yung negative lang napapansin or na share. Lagi na lang, you know, criticizing. Also praise the good things that are happening. Ako ay keep on saying na kahit anong magyare, magkaisa tayo. I mean, you know what? Kahit watak watak tayo, iba iba tayo ng paniniwala. No, let's fight for unity. Kahit sino pa ang lumaban doon sa pagkakaisa na yan, yun ang ipaglaban nating lahat. Kahit nag-aaway, uh, honestly, yung family niyo minsan nag-aaway na. Yung mga friends mo, suddenly, parang <laughs> iba na yung orientation. And then, so, sa nasabi ko lagi, paglaban natin yung pagkakaisa as, as a nation. And if, that, if that's nation's number one priority is unity, yes. then it will clean yes. up. Yes, in the very first place, Kung iisipin nyo, it's not just happening in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. of course, yeah. Halos lahat ngayon ng bansa, mar maraming parehong experience. But how great would it be if the Philippines led the way in finding peace, right? So, to wrap up, Miguel? Wow, wrap up. Um, <laughs> no pressure? No pressure. <laughs> uh, we cannot control what everyone else does. We can only control what we do, how we react, how we feel. Um, and I'd go back to the first thing I said, which is empathy. Uh, and the context of that is everyone's going through something that we do not, we are not aware of. The same way that people are not aware of our own context. And there's so very little we can, we can draw out truthfully in everyone's post. So multiply that with the 40 or 50,000 people in, with smartphones and the 100 million people who are active online. Uh, wow, that's a lot to deal with. Um, and I think if we can just step back and find peace in understanding that people have their own uh, difficulties and challenges, then that's when, that's when love can, can, you can see love from someone calling out uh, negatively, you can see um, uh, pain in others, and I think that's when real action can, can take place. Yeah. Such a great note to end on. Thank you so, so much for that, guys. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you.